and uh, we can just start discussing just kind of open open discussion and, and you kind of leading just um, CVI in general and, and kind of its origins a little bit, but then also how yeah. you're the quadrants and how you're using it in real life. And so I was certified and, back in, I want to say 2009 in CVI. Maybe it was a little later than that, but the, the bottom line is there's, I've been around a lot of other tools, um, but for me, particularly as a coach, and I would say, I really wish I had this when I was running an office. Uh, not because it's determinant or fatal, but because it really is a great shortcut and in appreciating strengths of other areas. And I say that because very often one of the greatest breakdowns in leadership is um, a misunderstanding of somebody else's strengths. And CVI helped me celebrate the strengths of others that I would say that previous to that, I would perceive as being a weakness. Hmm. So the classic case in point is my wife and I are pretty much polar opposites on the CBI uh, in the sense that I'm a high merchant builder. I'm ready, fire, aim. I'm pretty much going. If you're using, uh, I'm firing off a lot of bullets, right? And I'm going, I'm just spraying it. If you give me an Ikea thing, I'm pretty much trying to feel my way through it. I'm not reading the instructions. When we buy a car, my wife reads the manual. She is high innovator, merchant. So my wife is ready, aim, 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 aim. Now hear me right. Both of those as strengths have corresponding weakness. Her getting stuck is a challenge for her as a high innovator. She's waiting for perfect circumstances and it's really hard to get perfect circumstances to start moving. I can help her get unstuck. And I can do it in a way as a merchant that will feel good to her, that sees her and, and helps her move forward. On the other side, my impetuousness, right? Sometimes it's taking initiative and he's, he's a starter, self-starter at that, but I can set myself on fire because I'm not doing the math on the front end. I'm not calculating all the risks. I'm not examining the soft spots on the floor. And my wife then in that case, is a high functioning merchant builder will actually pause and go, all right, innovator, what am I missing here? What do you see that I don't see? Very often she'll go, no, you're, you're good. Sometimes she'll say, hey, have you considered this? I'll say, I, I have, and I, and I know it's not perfect. I hear you, I validate you, and we're gonna move forward anyway. There's other times where she's completely just changed, changed my perspective on things, especially parenting. <laughs> she'll be like, hey, have you thought about this? So let me just walk through and I'll share my screen here just to help everybody understand what I'm talking about here. So the four quadrants and the merchant builder, banker innovator, this is based on a feudal system. So some of these words might not quite mean what we think they mean. For example, banker doesn't mean something that's great necessarily with numbers. They're great with knowledge. This is the person in the village that back in the day, hey, when the fire is kind of going burning down, we've got some embers, they'll bank it in the side of the hill to make sure that tomorrow we still have fire. This is a good thing because trying to start fire when it's flint and rock, it's really hard. It's way easier to just take the embers from yesterday. Hey, we came up with a really great meeting last meeting, and this banker is going to take great minutes. They're going to take notes. They're going to know what we talked about. As a division manager, you made promises or had thoughts and ideas that you threw out there that somebody documented, and you reach out to the banker and say, hey, did we cover everything from last meeting? Hey, you forgot to talk about paying off the contest. Oh, Thank you. All right, let's pay off the contest. The mm. banker, the core value there is knowledge. It's knowing the facts through research and measurement and proof and records. And this for the merchant feels like death because they're questioning me all the time on stuff. In TLA, they're the one that says, show me the facts. Or they're the one that says, do you have this program written down somewhere? And I didn't ever. Now, when I'm working at my least good, the thing I want to say typically to the banker is, no, we don't have that. We don't need it. This is the way I learned and you can learn it too. It's not seeing them, right? If I see them, if I'm a high functioning merchant, I'll say, banker, we don't, but I know we could. And in fact, if you could document this, I know we'll be better. And the banker, boy, there's nobody better than a banker to take minutes. There's nobody better than a banker to document what we currently do as best practices. They're capturing the knowledge. They've got all their pay stubs. And even if it's not physical, they know where to find them. They've saved them or they know where they are online, right? Hmm. Knowledge is catalyzed by justice. So it's ensuring the equity of access, accountability, compensation, and opportunity 
Uh, they really, they keep us accountable because they can show where we've done good work. Or if we've not done good work, the, the, the math would, be, would, would bear out there. The contributions to the team is they can serve, they hate waste. Um, so for example, a merchant that's just kind of going by feel, they're gonna go, how could you possibly be accurate and just not waste? If you're going higgledy-piggledy, if you're just going haphazard, that's not gonna be the best way to do this. And while sometimes they're right, uh, very often in vector, how the sausage gets made isn't always a perfect science. You know, it's a little bit more art than science. Whereas the bank would really want to see a, a recipe that they can follow. They would abhor the idea of just doing it to taste and throwing in enough salt until it tastes good, you know. Their contributions to the theme, though, is conservation. So once we got that recipe right, for them to write it down is awesome. Because now we've got it for future generations, right? There are things that when my grandmother passed away, we'll never taste again because it's gone. <laughs> Nobody documented. We didn't have a builder, a banker in the family to, to conserve and capture that information. The conflict strategy, and each of these have a conflict strategy. Some seem more evil than others, but each of them are equally stopping the team from moving forward. The banker, though, it's interesting is that they'll, they'll do aloof judgment. They'll be like, listen, I have answers. You're not asking me. So you know what? Fine. You'll do it wrong. <laughs> and then I'll bring my answers, right? Their learning style is to read and analyze. And that's a problem for the merchant because I'm coming in hot. I'm like, dude, this is going to be so great. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And they go, is there something I can read? No, nah, there's nothing. We don't have anything. But to... they don't want to take my word for it, which I'm seeing as not trusting me. But in reality, they're like, no, 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 let me just read it and then I'll be good. So for example, on CBI, hey, bankers out there, there is a PDF handbook. And if you've done the, the, the CBI, you can have access to and just email me, tbooth at cutco.com. I will send you the PDF version of the CBI handbook so you can read for yourself what each of these are. So don't take my word for it, read it yourself and you're gonna be satisfied by reading. You're gonna do the deep dive in each of these and a, a high functioning, Innovator, merchant, or builder will ask the banker, banker, remind me, which, um, the, this AM, is she, where is she at on the CVI? Oh, she's a builder innovator. Oh, they probably know, right? They've got all this information. They probably got it on their phone. Yeah, here's their actual numbers. Like they've got all this information at their fingertips. And when we invite them to be awesome, the, the team is better. What's important to share, and there's a reason I'm starting with bankers that we usually kind of they self-select out of our program because so many things are not written down. So much of what we do at Vector is not comfortable for the banker. We need to be better. I think we've been better since CBI has been introduced at retaining more bankers. Instead of just saying, you don't need that, we're actually trying to listen to them and actually document more stuff. And it's been, it's been really helpful. What I'm suggesting here is that we can, all four of these can function very well as CEOs. And I share this because I've, I've walked people through this in coaching where they're like, okay, I wish I was more like the builder because that's what a leader is. Hmm. I'm like, well, you're not wrong, but I've seen outstanding CEOs that are bankers. Actually, I've seen outstanding CEOs that are innovators. <laughs> and I've seen, of course, merchants as well, but typically people would call merchant even like, oh, you're more like touchy feely and rainbows and unicorns and you need to be more business oriented or more, more results oriented. All four of these can be effective in leadership, especially when we function well and mature in each of those. So for example, when we see yourself drifting into the negative conflict strategy for us to lean into our secondary power is one of the most effective ways to get unstuck. So if I find myself drifting into aloof judgment, I'm gonna challenge myself on that as a banker and say, all right, now I need to actually put my hand up and say, Evan, I don't know if it's the right time. I'm just saying, I see something here. Would you want to hear it now or later? And give your DVM a chance to go, you know what? Bring it now. Hey, you know, we've got like three contests we've not paid out on. And at some point, if we don't pay out on those, that's because really negative. We shouldn't have another one until we paid out on those. I'm glad we got you, banker. Thank you. This is a big fix that I would have missed, right? So the banker has the place. The banker needs to trust when they're tempted to go to just disengage and go, fine, whatever, you, you fools figure it out. We need to actually re-engage and bring that knowledge to the room and see if, give them a chance to make the right, the right call. Evan, of the merchant builder, banker, innovator, where, where do you fall? Do you remember what you are on the CBI? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a merchant builder. Merchant and, builder. Uh, so you and I are merchant mm -hmm. builders. Do you remember mm -hmm. your numbers, by the way? 
I want to say 2422 or 2420. All right. So I have to look at the idea. So the idea that the number actually matters. So any separation of three numbers on the CVI is what they would call a magnitude shift, right? So it's almost like a uh, like an earthquake on the, on the seismic scale, right? A whole number is a big shift, right? So a, a three is a big gap between the two. So if somebody's a 24, 22, you can get to builder, but you're mostly going to function as a merchant. You're really a true merchant. In fact, anything north of 25, they would call a profound version of any one of those four. As a 24, 22, and all these, all the makeups are great. I've seen outstanding leaders at all of these numbers. I've seen a complete box. Kathy Kristen is almost equal in all four of those. That has its own challenges, but she can get to all four of the quadrants. I'm a six on the banker. I'm a six. Now hear me right. That's not an excuse for me not doing spreadsheets. That's not an excuse for me not doing my banking. Just because it doesn't naturally occur to me to have spreadsheets, doesn't mean that I can't even life hack my way into doing those things to get that information so I can serve people better. That's my number one core value. Yours is love. If I can understand the value of keeping good stats, in loving others, I can do stats all day long. It's just I'll have to jump that extra step to be inspired because I won't naturally ever do a spreadsheet. <laughs> I don't find joy in the spreadsheet. I find joy in the information that helps me love others and that comes from the spreadsheet. So just important to clarify there. A 24, 22, so you're a merchant builder and whatever your primary is, is really the one you're gonna probably go to most, but also that second one does tend to flavor the first one, right? Especially if you're 22, because you can get the builder. And sometimes in the, uh, if you're in negative conflict or if you're in a just place where circumstances are tough right now, you might shift into builder. And people might go, well, where's my lovey-dovey DVM? I got a guy that's hammering me for numbers right now. <laughs> That's, that's not, actually, that is Evan. That is Keller. Um, it, it would be important as somebody in your TLA, if, if <laughs> Evan's going into power and personal energy, invested to make a positive difference, he's like, tell me the numbers, tell me what's going on. If you find that Evan's being short, he's probably shifted into a secondary power. What's he not feeling in that moment is probably not feeling enough love. He's probably not feeling like he's being heard, seen, appreciated, perhaps. In that case, you might be able to help him shift back into merchant by just taking a knee. <laughs> just let him be awesome for a little bit and actually see if we can't serve him. Hey, seems like you're a little stressed right now. What do you need? That's a merchant type question that actually might kind of hit you know, the off button on that raging builder <laughs> and get you to shift back into your, your primary power. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment because there are times where it makes sense to shift into builder. But let me just unpack this a little bit more. Builder is uh, personal energy invested to make a positive difference. You want a project started, you want to give it to a builder. If uh, This is faith that they'll know what to do, not right just right now, but they'll know what to do next. As we get going, they don't need to see any instructions. If you had a helicopter exercise where you're having everybody build a helicopter from scratch, they're already taking the pieces apart, sorting them. They're already moving before we even hear the instructions. They're already going. They decide to do, that's their learning style. So they're very tactile. They need to be constantly changing. They need to be moving. They learn by doing even more by hearing. So there's somebody that could typically watch the interview a few times. They won't have to just transcribe the whole thing. They can watch a few times and they're gonna be good. They might not be exactly like the book. You might need to walk them through the importance of actually adhering to why we say what we say. Once they get that, builders are very pragmatic. So if they understand why they need to do this and the fact that this is going to take less time and get more results, you can convince most builders to do it this way as long as we speak to their language, right? Again, it's mostly action and results. Builders love mowing the lawn. They love, oh, they get out there and they see the fruit of their labor. I did good work and here it is, it's done. When they start something, they will typically hedgehog until it's finished. So the builder is the one that will go until, I'm gonna PDI until the list is done. A merchant might've moved on to the next task, but the builder keeps going. This can be a, a strength and this can be a weakness because at some point it's three o'clock and they need, in the morning, they needed to knock off and get to sleep. They didn't get through the list. They don't even know it's three o'clock. They're just jamming until it's done. Strength as long as we can keep it under check. 
The conflict strategy, this is the one that tends to wear the black hat and the mustache out of the four negative conflict strategies because intimidation is not very sexy right now. This is one that seems like they're the bully and they might be. You know, if they're feeling negative conflict strategy, they're like, don't you know who I am? And I've even said things like this, like, guys, you know, I don't want to tell you that my way is the best way, but I am the freaking division manager. Like, I'll say things like that at times, or I did back in the day, or, or as a dad, I'll be like, guys, I just need you to do what I'm telling you to do right now. You're not respecting my authority. I mean, I'm triggered by the fact that you're not respecting my authority, right? So this is the Cartman of the group. The, the builder is the one that's pounding the table saying, I demand respect. I'm just going to do this or screw it. I'm just going to leave, right? So the builder... They have their place. They're the workhorse. They're the, they're the jammer. You want to hand again, hand a task to them because they'll start it and they will finish it. Builders finish the books that they start reading, even if they don't like it. Why? They got to finish that thing, dude. It's a trophy when I finish it, right? I did it. Um, this is why the business attracts a lot of builders. There's a lot of cause and effect. If I make calls, I get demos. I get demos. I make sales. I make sales. I get recognition. I love this. Builders are celebrated at Vectory. Challenges builders aren't always naturally, organically the best leaders in the sense that they can burn through a lot of people. My Sports way or the terms. highway, <laughs> you got it. Hey, if you don't do it my way, no big deal. It's just you won't be here very long. Woo! You know, or I get my results because I'm a builder and I've got standards and actuality that people love you and that's why they're working for you. But it, you might be almost drunk on your own power and, and really what is great about you might not be what you think is great about you. Builders not very often are aware of their environment or their effect in their environment. Now, if they're a builder merchant, that's going to be hard for them because they'll do the thing and then they'll have remorse for the thing. <laughs> they're like, oh, I made people feel bad and I feel badly about that, but I don't know what to do differently next time. High functioning builders though are, are very, very effective in business. Uh, let me hit on merchant and then innovator. So uh, the merchant is the core value is love. It's working towards an inspired vision of what can be by nurturing the core values in oneself and in others. Very often kind of the granola, very love oriented, very gushy. You know, how's everybody feeling? How people feel matters. Sometimes people will even call it like innovators. I was coaching one today. He goes, yeah, it's been all politically correct. I said, well, you know, I'm going to bring hard feedback for people, but I'm going to do it in a way that moves them forward. How they feel is more important than what's even how they're performing right now. The merchant is going to be dialing into how they're doing. And every group needs a strong merchant as well, just like we need each of these. The merchant's the one going, how's everybody doing? And this is an important question to be asking as lungs are burning and people are tired. So love catalyzed by truth, the, their ability to see the way things are, read people, read the room, and to know what's needed in that moment boy, great having a merchant and to trust them, right? So if you're a high builder, real important, if you can find a merchant, and it's not important that you are the, 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 the feeler or the empath in the room. You need to have somebody that is though. You need to have somebody that when she, your FSM has a, a homemaker cancel and is crying in the room. If you can't go in there with empathy, send in your merchant that does. So your merchant's gonna go in there and be like, how you doing? I'm so... I'm a bad sales rep. You're not a bad sales rep. This is a tough day. You'll be okay. The merchant can handle this all day long. The merchant hears the hardest things ever, and it's not heavy for them. They actually celebrate being able to work through challenges with people. Their contributions to the team then is relationships. It is vision. It's like, okay, things are hard right now, but we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Now, they might not always soberly consider, are we really okay? So one of the challenges here is that they might see things as better than they really are. So merchants do need strong builders and innovators around them to like actually question like, are, are we good? Because <laughs> we don't look good, you know? A, a mature merchant will trust, will actually distrust their read on things and check in with the innovator and the banker to make sure. The conflict strategy is to manipulate. And I wish, it, I feel it's so dirty every time I explain this. Because I've said things like, I'm just trying to love everybody here. I don't know why everybody's giving me such a hard time. Or, hey, if you trusted me, you would just you would just do what we're saying right now and everything would be better. And I've really been sincere in that, but that's highly manipulative. And it's not even like the mom is like, well, I'm just want what's best for the family. It's not even that, but that's a caricature of the high merchant. I am trying. 
see the merchants will see themselves as being pure love, not just like their core value, but I, I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> and when we say things like that, that's manipulative. It's actually not allowing them their space. It's not being curious about where they're at. It's just trying to get them to comply so that we feel good because merchants are really feeling a lot of this. Their learning style though is to talk and listen. So they don't necessarily need to do, but they need to talk about what we did. And to talk about that and to listen and really engage is how they're gonna learn the best. Merchants. Transitioning into innovators. Their core value is wisdom. And because my wife is a high innovator, uh, I have a special place in my heart for the innovators at Vector because they really do unlock, she's unlocked me so much. Her strength has helped augment and make my strength so much better when I lean on it. Uh, and I've seen this function so well in so many groups since learning about this. And we share this because it seems like the stick in the mud or something that's just not fun. They, they show up almost like a merchant because they're very uh, uh, intuitive as well, kind of like the merchant is, but it's in a different way. They're intuitive, but they don't trust. Two merchants get together like, I love that guy. I love that guy. Choose that awesome. So we find what's common. <laughs> Whereas the innovator is like, I don't trust that guy. Like, what do you mean you don't trust that guy? That guy's awesome. Right? The innovators go, they're intuitive, but it's not always like the positive bias. They're like, well, this, this, and this. I'm like, dude, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, they showed up late for this thing. That means they don't care about me. Like, that's, totally, that's totally not it. There's another way to interpret that. The innovators reading all the time. It's wisdom in seeing the way things are and discerning what to do about it quick. Like the merchant, they might not be able to show their math. They're doing a lot of computation, uh, computations really quickly in their mind. And this really does, when it's working fast, work with compassion. It's remaining empathetic and curious regardless of the behavior and emotions of others. So they can hang in. The challenge really for them is when merchants get together, it's great. Two builders get together, it's not great. <laughs> Because they're just, they're both vying for power. The two innovators get together like, this is the best way to do it. No, 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 this is the best way to do it. Well, what about this? What about, they could debate that forever and actually cause each other to get stuck. Two innovators. Two merchants together, no problem. Uh, two bankers together. Hey, let's combine our forces. We'll take better minutes. We'll collate our minutes. And it'll be, so it's funny how when you do uh, the equal opposites, how they function. The innovator, the contributions to the team is assessment solutions. The innovators are in the group to help us get unstuck. They very often, not only with, just by showing up, can see the way forward, they're usually right. The challenge being is that very often they're not volunteering it because it's not perfect yet. They're still computing all the data, all still analyzing as they're looking at it. So what they have they think is really good, the high-functioning builder, the high-functioning bank, the high-functioning merchant goes, innovator, what are we missing? What do you see that we don't see here? Innovator goes, A. You're like, whoa, good catch. That's good. My innovator wife, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the ways that we also function great and not great. I trust that everything's going to work out. Christy is thinking about A, B, C, D. She's down the line to like G. And she's worried about G. She's not sleeping tonight because she's worried about G. Now, early merchant, young, Trent, immature, I'm like, Christy, you can't worry about G. G's not a thing. So many things can go right before we get to G. Hear me right, folks. I'm not wrong. It's just in that scenario, this is not a male-female dynamic. I'm not honoring or valuing or validating where she's coming from. A high-functioning merchant can dial into this person, what does this innovator need? Not what do I need, what does the innovator need? If she's wisdom, she's sorting through stuff. She's working it out. If she's worried about G, the best thing I can do is ask her questions about G. Hey, if G happened, what could we do? Oh, we could do this. But then there's, then there's H. Okay, H happens. What have we done when H happened in the past? And she goes, okay, well, H happened in the past. And then we got the I, and I is a thing. I is definitely, I is the reason that we cannot move forward on this. I go, well, if I happened, what could we do? Nothing. Well, no, no, but there's something, right? So we could do something. Well, we could do this. Well, would I be acceptable to you? Yeah, I would be. Okay, I could, I could do I. Are you feeling like we've got enough information to move forward on? So I guide her through a process 
where she goes, okay. So what I'm trying to get at here is, is actually not, it's not placating the innovator. It's actually utilizing this process. Hear me right. Sometimes she'll catch stuff where I'm going, I would never have considered Jay. <laughs> and Jay would have been a career in the injury. And she caught Jay early in the process because that's the way her brain works. I've actually come home from meetings where I'm like, Christy, I'm going to fire my pilot manager. This guy stepped up, just, he's just screwed up in a way that I cannot move forward from. It's either going to be this or it's got to be this. And either one of those are not acceptable. Tell me what I'm missing. Talk me off the ledge is what I've said to my innovator confidant. And she says, it's so funny how often she'll do this. She'll go, what about this? And she hits me with the one chestnut called the throat punch. <laughs> she hits me with the one question and I'm, I'm done. And it changes everything, that one question. So lean on the innovator because they have perspectives that we would just never arrive at. They assess, they solve, they're always working on stuff. Hear me right. In a negative spot, <laughs> that same interrogation, that one question can stop the entire process. And they're good. They can ask more than one question. For Christy, she's the type that she could ask one and I'm, I'm out. But she could ask four or five if she needed to. What about this? And then what about this? And have you thought this one through? And I haven't. <laughs> but she can punch holes all day long through this thing of why this can't work. So if, if the innovators aren't feeling heard in the room, they might be floating a lot of those, uh, you know, mm. sticks to poke through the tent. Let's ask them in advance what's going on. Hey, innovators, what are we seeing here that we're missing? Well, this looks good, but what about this? Okay. And so the key is to try and validate what they're seeing, even if we're not going to take action on it, but to encourage them. Hey, when you see stuff like that, I need you to bring that to me. I'm counting on you volunteering that, right? I'm going to work hard to ask you, but if I forget, please bring it. Each of these have kind of their own, let's say the negative complex strategy, the things that takes the air out of the room for them. The innovator, they're so concerned, worried. If their core value is wisdom, of looking foolish. Part of the reason they don't want to float their idea out, even though it's 98% there and awesome, is they're afraid of the 2% that they haven't quite figured out yet. There's always that 2% almost that could undo all this. They don't trust that they got it yet, even though that 98% might be 10x better than any other solution we have right now, but they're not volunteering it because they're worried about looking dumb. Innovators, you want to give them plenty of time to think. Anytime I can give the innovator the questions I'm going to ask before the event, or even ask the question, but give everybody a few minutes to just collect their thoughts before asking for feedback. So when facilitating, I'll say, listen, I'm going to give you a few moments to journal. That is primarily for the innovator in the room to give them a chance to think it through. When we facilitate, we ask them, they can journal it and then talk it through one-on-one -on -one with a trusted partner. That innovator now has had a chance to iterate twice before they ever emerge it to the group. In fact, when we facilitate, they journal it, they'll usually pair up and talk about it with somebody, and then we'll give people a chance to share it. Maybe they shared their idea with a merchant. And the merchant's like, hey, listen, Christy has this idea of this, and Christy's blushing in the corner, she's embarrassed, but the idea has now emerged. And while facilitating, this is one of the ways that we can harness the, the wisdom that's in the room is if the innovator just is deathly afraid of, of looking silly in front of a group, you give them one-on-one -on -one time with the merchant, they've got ideas, plenty of thoughts, and the merchant emerges it. And now this, now this thing's cooking with gas, right? Um, the banker, they're going, are we even documenting this? They're looking around and like, are we even recording this? The banker is the one that goes back and looks at the archives. They're watching the video. They're like, hey, I watched your video last week or I listened to your podcast. And this, like they're capturing the knowledge because they know that if we capture more knowledge and we harness the power of that knowledge, everybody's going to experience more success here. So the banker wants to know that we're looking at the numbers, we're looking at the data, we're looking at the stats, we're, we're looking at the last agenda. The banker might be the best person to come up with next year's agenda. So if I'm a division manager right now, I'm saying, hey, banker, what do we do Last year at SC2, what was our agenda? They've got it. <laughs> They've also got the, all of the corresponding contests we had, all the documents leading up to. They've got it. I don't know where my stuff is. I looked through my email, but they've got it saved in the right drive, the right file folder, and they send me links and they've got it. 
When we harness the power of the banker, we can ensure that people are being treated fairly, that everybody's got a shot, everybody can find the information, they're conserving, we're not wasting as much, we're working hard and smart. The banker is a great way when you combine them with the innovator of how to uh, innovate ideas in our company. Hey, here's how we currently do things. What's a better way to build this mousetrap? Those two in particular will be able to figure it out. The builder is going to be the one that's going to figure it out, though, and implement it. They're the ones going to be able to grab that flag from the bank and the innovator and run with it. The banker, for example, very often is so concerned with the process that they might not be knocking out as many demos as they could. Like every single one of their customers has a thank you note that's handwritten, but they might not be doing as many demos as they could be doing because instead of phoning and creating new demos, they're, they're documenting their stats or studying the numbers or, or, or just researching. Knowledge is important, and yet in our business in particular, and generally in business, action is typically rewarded. So the banker sometimes gets stuck in analysis paralysis and just going deep dive and getting lost in the numbers. The builder might not know any of their numbers. They might not know their average order size or any of that, but they're crushing it. Why? Because they just do demos. <laughs> they just, they understand the large number, low percentage endeavor. They just understand, all right, listen, even if I don't study the interview, if I just run 10 interviews before you've done two, I'll be better. And sometimes they're not wrong. They can intuitively pick, her at, pick it up. And by just running the interview, they can do better. Hear me right. That builder can typically improve a little more by a little bit of aim. Just a little bit of aim. You give them a little bit of feedback, have them watch their interview. The builder is going to be better. A little bit. They don't need a lot. Um, when I'm working with a builder, I'm not giving them books to read. I'm suggesting audio for them to listen to. When they've got the audio, they're, they're going to move quicker, move faster. They can synthesize that information because they're just going to put it into practice. They're just going to talk about this book or Matthew McConaughey's Green Lights. They're just going to just, they're doing all the time, right? They'd rather read 50 books in a year than go deep on four. And that's okay. We need that. We need just the, the wide breadth. They might not be able to go deep on any of those. Uh, typically, the other areas are going to be better at that. But they start the, and they finish the things that they start. I've got 22 books that I've not finished reading, but I got a little bit out of all of them. And I've gone deep on those and I'm really practicing those ideas as a merchant. But I'm very comfortable with the idea of not finishing a book. Not all books are great. <laughs> Some are just mm -hmm. good. And I just put those down, right? But the merchant is typically the one that's trying to make sure everybody's feeling okay in that, right? So that's the strength, right? So again, if each of these have corresponding negative conflict strategies, the builder, their greatest fear is feeling like they don't have any power or any control. So if we're going to have a meeting, if we're going to train them for four hours straight without a break, that builder has no control. If we're going to ask this builder to role play exactly the way it's written, that builder is going to re revolt and reject that. The builder needs to have some autonomy. They need to have some choice. They need to be able to at least feel like they can make some decisions here. Otherwise, you're stripping them of their power. And when they don't feel their power, they're like, listen, I don't need this job. I can do anything. They're not wrong. I'm not saying we're going to just capitulate to the builders. We're just saying, hey, listen, what would, what would help you feel good in this moment? What would be good? Let me just do my thing. Go with God. <laughs> do, do, do your thing, builder. Right? Hey, when you need some help, let me know. I'm here. I'm available. The banker's worried that we're not documenting everything and, and Vector, they're not wrong. So again, we usually start about the bankers. They don't make it too deep into our process. If you're a banker and you're in TLA, congratulations. You've run the gauntlet and you're making it. Our company's better with you, by the way. And some of our best leaders have been bankers. I believe at least one of our presidents right now is a primary banker. It's for the record, we have two presidents. The merchant, though, the merchant gets celebrated a ton because it looks like the nicest, especially in 2021, where it's really sexy to be just really engaged and empathetic and be able to hear everybody. And you're right, that's always been an important and very good move. But right now, it's particularly in vogue. Just understand that merchants, we have blind spots. And we're better when we're listening, when we're handing the big projects to the builder, not trying to just do it ourselves. Right. Hey, builder, you're probably going to do this better than I would. Why don't you go ahead with this one? Right. I'll support you in anything you need. No problem. Right. The merchant, uh, if you're in a position, where, especially if you're an AM, and you've got a builder that's a DM. Instead of being like, hey, that DM doesn't understand you like I do. That'll be a real temptation for the merchant. Right. Hey, listen, I, you know, anytime you can actually still um, reinforce what's good about that builder and put that builder in a position to succeed instead of usurping that, that influence and saying, hey, 
I'm more important because they're just stomping on your heart and I listen to you. That's manipulative. That's when the merchant is not functioning well. Anything the merchant can do to authentically still, and as I said, because there's no world where the merchant can do anything but what's genuine, authentic, real. It's really hard for us to lie. It's really hard for us to affirm something that's not true really easy on the other side for us to affirm things that we see that are true. So one minute manager, catch him doing something right. He says, give them specific feedback. This is the merchant's wheelhouse. We noticed it. We can say it. We can reinforce that. We can help the builders see where they're crushing it. We can help the banker see how taking good notes in those minutes that you submitted to me. I'm not going to read them all, but boy, I'm so glad I've got them because if it is, there is something good in there, I, we've got it now. Hey, innovator, what are you seeing that we're missing here? We can help elevate their perspective on things, right? Uh, or any one of these could probably come up with math. And Richard's like, oh, dude, I don't even know what that math is. I don't know what nine times 28 is, but the innovators got it, right? We sell, the merchant does a great job of celebrating each of these, which is why I would say disproportionately, the vast majority of division managers in our company, leaders in our company are merchants. It's not the way in every company. Most companies, people get promoted based on doing great not necessarily leading great, although I would suggest that uh, probably the merchant does have an upper hand in most cases on doing that. They don't have the market cornered on that. Every single one of these can do well in vector. The key is to recognize where I'm not, where I'm not great and be able to punch up the other three because they all have strengths that we need. Knowing how to work with the other three negative conflict strategies when we see those. All right, I'll come up for air here. I've done a lot of talking, way more than I intended here, Evan, but you get me started on CVI. It's mm -hmm. been so effective to really, I've done Myers-Briggs, I've done a lot of you know, LIFO, a lot of other um, psychometric analysis tools. Enneagram is big right now. Enneagram, I would suggest, is probably just a pop culture version of this. I've seen that it's uh, wildly compatible. I think this is a little more accurate. I think that this is a little more business applicable. Uh, and if you have people doing Enneagram in your organizations, have them take the CBI because it's a similar language. They'll figure out what the six is in Enneagram and they'll know what that is here. And uh, it's almost like uh, shorthand. It helps them uh, kind of cut some corners there. Open to thoughts, questions, comments, or points of clarification here because I just, uh, it's like drinking yeah, a fire hose, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think it's great. You know, so my TOA is going to be watching this. So I'll, I'll, I'll end the recording here shortly, but just to kind of capture this part where, um, you know, I think it's important for everybody to see these four quadrants. It's important. What, what, we're, what we're going for here is awareness of self and awareness of the others around us. That's and it. this and this is not something for me to, I'm going to completely put Trent in a box because he's a merchant and XYZ because they're a builder or a bank or what have you. It's right. just informing how I interact with that person so that way I can help like you said punch up the other areas where I might be weak mm -hmm. and it gives us an insight but it doesn't tell the whole story all the time but it gives us an insight into how people operate so we can better lead them uh, co-lead them uh, work with them whatever our position is and that's where the value of this tool is is so strong so um, well, if I could double yeah. down on that before we hit stop here, Evan, you know, I would say that uh, this is probably the best tool I've seen in terms of shortcuts for how to elevate others and, and support and see their strengths and help mitigate weaknesses, right? That said, as I've seen this abused and being determinant or fatal. So when somebody goes, they're a banker, I'm not even going to meet with them for TLA. I'm not even going to bother promoting the innovator because it's just a problem. If you're not a merchant builder, you need not apply. I'm like, no, 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 you've missed this. You've absolutely missed this. The best teams have all four of these, somebody that is primary in each of these, if we can, by the way, because uh, there are strengths for each of these. And there's a reason that there's all four. And just because in our, our company, uh, you really see the merchants and the builders kind of elevated. That doesn't mean that there is no an amazing place for the builders, so the bankers and the innovators. So we need all four on a team to be really effective. Um, and I think we'd be making a gross error if we're saying, listen, if you're this, you, we, you're gonna be no good here. There's no, not one of these is a second tier, second class in a core value. All four of these are necessary for a high functioning society, a high functioning team, high functioning ministry, high functioning family. 
Hmm. All four of these need to be represented in one form or another. Fantastic. 